Hi guys, it's uh, the Sports Coffee. Uh, welcome, welcome to everybody tuning in. Uh, I'd like to thank the continued support of InsureWise, uh, the the commercial and domestic insurers uh, from from Peterborough. Um, we've got new we've got new tops to promote as well. So we've got a new top with like a match top uh, with InsureWise and obviously the logo for Sports Coffee. Today I'm delighted to introduce a guest. Um, who was a, a former Peterborough United player, um, also a, an international for uh, Congo. It is uh, Gabby Sukwani. Gabby, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Thanks good. for having me. So we're, what we're going to do today, the format today, Gabby, is um, we've, we've asked people on our, our, our Twitter and our Facebook pages to throw questions out to us. So we've got about, we've got about 18 questions to, to get through. Some are... Some are Shorter than others, but we'll we'll go through those and, and see what kind of what kind of answers you can you can uh, throw back at us. So uh, the first one is from uh, somebody called Harry Anders. He's just put the best trainer and worst trainer that you that you played with. It doesn't have to be at Peterborough; it could be throughout your career. Is there anybody Ooh, um, that out? Best and worst trainer. I yeah. think if, if I go to the it, well, it'd probably be best trainer. I'd say George Boyd. Okay, always on it. Um, yeah, just no matter what, he, he's always running around and staying, staying behind as well, working on things. So I think George Boyd was probably the best trainer. Um, worst trainer, it's probably a toss up, probably Madison's up there. <laughs> 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 he was up there, but he, he just knew when to turn it on. So you didn't know whether, whether he's going to turn it on any minute. So yeah, I'd say Madison's up there. He's, he's probably the worst, I'd say. <laughs> All right, okay. So uh, next one is. Why do, why do footballers not respect officials like they do in rugby? And that's from uh, David Broccoli, who's a, a posture. I just think because it's so passionate, you want to win um, at all costs. So it's it's in the moment. I don't think it's done premeditated. I think it's just when it happens, you know, like when a little kid, their parents tell them off sometimes, you know, they, they get annoyed and it's just kind of the same thing. And I don't think it's it's on purpose, but... Yeah, I think I think it's just that it's passionate and everyone follows it and obviously the crowd, the adrenaline. And that's all it is. I don't think it's anything serious. No, 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 that's a fair comment. Um <laughs> a tongue-in-cheek question here. It said, why did you why did you join cobblers? <laughs> <laughs> no, at the time for me it was it was all I did think about it a lot. Um the options that I had at the time, it was probably the best option because my kids were in school at the time, not too far. Um, yeah. it's down the road in Peterborough so it just made sense at the time I couldn't just up and leave straight away and they gave me a good contract as well on top of it and for me at the time it made sense you know um, and I enjoyed it <laughs> yeah no that's fair enough it was always going to be one of those in there um, so this is from Matt uh, best current young player that you you've seen at Posh at Posh Burrows I think is um is the one that stands out for me. You know, I've I've watched a lot of the games. I've been commentating a lot of the games, and he just mm. he's adapting so well. And you wouldn't think twice about putting him in. He's had to come in a couple of times, even for players with the ability of Dembele. You know, and he's still done the job. So Burrows definitely. Yeah. So um, would you would you um, would you think of playing him? You know, in in the big like last five or six games if. You know, if if there was an injury, if called upon, I think he'll he he won't do us any harm. You know, I think he's 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 shown that he can uh, stand in there with with the best of them and perform to a high level. So, yeah, why not? Yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, so the next one is, and this is what we we touched we've touched on on, on on a previous question is from this is from Mace. This is. What are your thoughts on the Marcus Madison situation currently? Because obviously he's left Bolton to go back to the yeah. club. Go yeah, I, th I think it's it's um it's a situation where it's kind of someone's got their uh, put their arm around him, you know, because um, he does take a lot of stick. Um, sometimes people say he brings it on himself, but he does take a lot of stick. And yeah, everyone's got a breaking point, and it seems that you know it's really affecting him now. I was quick when I saw the the post. I called him straight away and checked he's all right, you know. Um, and he seemed in decent spirits, you know. You just have to just let him know that everyone's sort of around you and everyone's supporting you. And he, he's not a bad person. He's different to a lot of people. Yeah. Um, but I think he's one of them players you have to sort of understand. And I understand Marcus, and I shared a dressing room with him. I was his captain for a while, so I do understand. 
Okay, so you say he's different. Is it? Is he? Is he? Is he quiet or is he really outgoing in the dressing room? No, I'd say he's probably more to the quiet side, if I'm honest. But just some things he does, you question a lot. You know, like with the situation, for example, with the headband situation, where he wore um, the designer headband on the football pitch. You know, it's, it it takes a lot of character to do things like that. You know, so I know he's a strong mental. He's very strong mentally, and he doesn't do things by the book what um, everyone else does all the time. It's a bit loud sometimes, as in like wears two different colour pair of boots with, you know, things like that. Yeah. It's not something you see from a normal, you know, footballer. And it's just the way he expresses himself and it works for him. Yeah, yeah. No, no, that's fair. It's, it's, from a, a, a Peter United supporter, it's probably good to understand from, you know, from inside the dressing room what, what kind of mm-hmm. character he is. Because obviously he's, he's totally different on the pitch, isn't he? He expresses himself. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess the way he does bits and pieces in the in dressing room then relates to, to playing. Brilliant. Um, this one's from Lee. Do you have do you have plans to progress uh, to manage in the Football League? Is that an ambition of yours? Because obviously you're currently at Spalding United. Yeah, no, to be honest with you, I, I sort of, um, when I decided to retire, it was like the world was sort of open for me. You know, I wanted to go into punditry because I enjoy it and I enjoy the whole media side of things. Um, and I've done quite some big piece, bits and pieces and it's kept me really busy. Um, so when that came through, I already was doing my coaching badges and it's just another avenue for me. Um, so for me, it's just see where it takes me. I'm enjoying it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I'll, I'll always just like football, try and get to the highest possible place I can within management. Um, this one's from Tony. Uh, best centre-half partnership. So I don't know if he means with yourself or with just in, in general. Um, I think with, with myself, I think um, I enjoyed my partnership with, to be fair, every, everywhere I went, I sort of had to do, the older I got, but I enjoyed the one with Brian Bennett um, the most mm. uh, because he was progressing. He came from Brisbane and, you know, we knew about his talents and I sort of, I think I helped him um, at the time at Posh to sort of protect him and yeah. let him express himself a bit more um, and then everywhere I went it's sort of been the same I had a good one with Max Amar at um, Gillingham uh, which we sort of we sort of shut the shut shut stopped the goals coming in and that was my aim and even at Northampton I had a very good partnership but I think the Ryan Bennett one sticks out because of what he went on to progress and do and it's just I'm just glad I played a, you know a part in his development yeah, yeah. no no definitely no it's an excellent plan um so this one's from Chalky. How do how do you think Posh will fare if they make the, the championship? Obviously, this is a still a, not a definite, but if they do, yeah, no, everyone's scared to say they will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I personally think if they if they made it, um, it it would be a, a season where I think they can consolidate this time because I think it's been a long time coming. Um, so see, there's never been that big a gap since, you know, uh, Posh have been stuck in League One. And now I think I think uh, Fergie will be planning already. Um, if he hasn't already started, you know, he'll be planning and looking ahead of players that he thinks can sort of add to the quality that obviously is there to, to compete, to be fair. I don't think it's a thing where they, they'll go up and just try and survive. I think they'll try and compete. And, and I, think, I think they're good enough. I think they're showing it. Yeah, definitely. There's there's lots of good quality there um, in the squad, which are, which I guess shows with where they you know where they're sitting sitting at the moment. Um, so the next one is when Posh go up. <laughs> so somebody a bit more positive. When Posh go up, who will who will they beat in their first game in the championship? <laughs> which is a bit, a random. <laughs> uh, that's a no idea, but I'd, I'd say West Brom. Let's <laughs> go West Brom because they've got a history of playing West Brom. So. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, let's say what's for. Yeah, buddy. Um, another one here. I haven't put their name to it, but just put posh or cobblers. <laughs> oh, of course, posh. Yeah. You know, I, I never, I never made um, ever made it seem any different. You know, I, I play one hundred percent whatever club I'm at. You know, so at cobblers, I, I played a good season, and the fans there loved me in the end. You know, it took a, it took, it took time because of the posh connection, yeah. but they were singing my name. Just the same, you know. So it was, it, so I give it one hundred percent. But you know, my heart to Peter, right? And that's very clear. You know? Yeah. 
So next one is Andrew McClellan. Um, he's put, how have you found the difference from playing um, and having control of what you're doing to then going into management that's folding? I mean, yeah, playing is a lot easier um, for me. You know, I, I kind of got to the point where I can kind of play on autopilot. You know, I kind of knew where to be, what to do. Um, but managing, you're just constantly on the phone, making sure everything's correct. Uh, and then when you've got a player on your team, you've got now Ranger, you've got to worry if he's going to turn up or not. So it's, it's, yeah. just, it's, it's more problems, you know, you're thinking too much, you have to discipline players. You have to, you literally, especially at the level where I'm at, I'm literally director of football, scout, everything, you know, in one go. So it's, it's, I'm doing a lot of people's jobs, which I'm pretty sure is a lot easier um, the higher I go up. But yeah, I've enjoyed it, but it's just a lot, lot more responsibility and it's all lies on your head, you know? No, definitely. Um, so this is one from Amy Moles. Um, do you ever, like I do, wake up in a cold sweat? No player warns you like 4,000 plus friends that a Palace player was behind you. That's a bit of a <laughs> yeah, a little touch you had there. <laughs> no, I don't wake up with cold sweats, you know. Um, as as I look at it, I've, no one can doubt uh, what I gave to Posh, you know. I gave everything, I left everything on the pitch, you know. There's nothing I, I never gave to Posh. I, I dived in front of so many balls, you know, to, yeah. to stop goals. I made last pitch tackles, I scored goals. So, for me, it's just one of their moments. It happens, you know. Um, you live yeah. with it, you, and hopefully this time around, a few games to go, back exactly where we belong and couldn't have it any other way, you know. Um, it happens, and it's just one of them things. It's one of them days, I think, that we'll put every posh fan and players that played on the day, they'll devastate it just the way, the way it happened. But results are built on a season, you know. Um, yeah. it, it's not just down to one moment uh, of the whole. 46 games and it, it was a good ending to the season we was in great form and I thought we did enough to stay up anyway you know the points tally was very high and it was just unfortunate it was just probably just meant to go down because um we gave everything we got so did I and it just wasn't to be and it's just one of them things you look back yeah, yeah. no it's, I think you know like you, like you mentioned about the, the points tally I think it's still the, the still the highest points tally of a team going down from the championship so just like you say, I think it's something that, you know, is out of everybody's hands and unfortunately was on the, the wrong side of, you know, Peterborough. So um, the next question is, the question again, it's anonymous, but it's it's about Spalding. Um, are you are you tracking Paul Taylor for, for Spalding? Transfer route. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, he's, he's one of the first players I thought because I didn't see what he was up to. So I've been trying to, trying to get through to him and I finally kind of got through to him and, you know, if we could sort something out, a player of his ability at that level will obviously stand out. And so for me, I am looking for the best players I can get for that level. And we've had conversations and let's just see where they go. Really. Is he is he still local to, to the area then? Nah, that's the problem. So, okay. so we've got a lot of logistics to um, to sort out before anything could happen. But it's something I will I will look into. I mean, there's there's players that are coming from London. Um, going to Spalding so I'm, I'm not stuck to it being around the area if it can work logistically and I can speak to the board I'm sure they'll help me make it happen So was Paul, Paul Taylor somebody that really impressed you when you were playing? I mean in in training and in some games he did things that no one else could you know there was, there was a couple there I mean Lee Tomlin and him in training sometimes you can just stand on the sideline and just clap at something they do you know um, Paul Taylor probably up there with the most talented players I've ever seen. You know, um, sometimes obviously in games he's not as consistent all the time, but some the moments that he does bring is yeah sensational at times. Uh, it's good to hear, again. It's it's good to hear that sort of from from the dressing room side of it because obviously you see what's on the you see what's on the pitch, but you don't always see how good they were in you know in near in the training environment. So that's great. Um, another sort of Current current question is: uh, Should Premier League clubs who want to join the Super League uh, be deducted points and have their players banned from the international stage? And that's from Ian. Yeah, I think I think the whole thing is disgraceful. To be honest, I think it's disrespectful to the fans, to everyone that you know enjoys the structure that it is now. Is and it's just the fact that they haven't. We we well, there's rumours that 
that things have been signed without the knowledge of anyone or any sort of poll to see what the fans think first because the fans made the football clubs and I just think it's very very disrespectful and it, they they should be really ashamed of themselves to go there because it's it's just for me it just it just speaks out of, it's that they're very greedy you know um because the format works is what we've got at the moment um and it can only be that they can only be that money's involved that that they decided to do something like that so for me I think yeah they should be banned personally I think I think the club should be banned from ever rejoining the Premier League if you know if it doesn't work out there and they should pay big sanctions personally. Yeah, no, I thought it was quite interesting to to see that Paris Saint Germain and uh, Bayern Munich and Dortmund had, had turned the opportunity down. Where I've been to I've been to Paris Saint Germain and the club itself when I went on the tour seemed quite money orientated. It didn't really mm. have much of a history because it mm. the club itself hadn't been going a lot. Around. So I was, I was actually surprised that Paris Saint-Germain, with the players they've got, um, and mm. obviously bringing you know, a lot of money into the into the um, the league, um, weren't one of the clubs that decided to to go down that route. So fair play to them. Um, so the next one is, um, what separates uh, top players from the rest? Do you think across you know across the different levels that you have played in? Yeah, I think just top players they they they're more consistent. That's it. That's the only thing. There's there's top, top players in League One that just don't do it as often as the players in the Championship. And similar when you go up to the Prem, it's the same. But when you get to the Prem, the difference is if you make a mistake, you get punished. And that's that's the difference, you know. And in the lower leagues, potentially they could miss because they don't have the same quality and um, sort of accuracy that maybe the players in the Prem, Premier League's got. You get punished straight away. You know, some teams don't even have an opportunity, but as soon as they get one, it's over, you know. Um, and so I say the consistency because even at our level, I mean, I've seen players that can easily play in the league, you know. And that's 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 just the mentality as well. Maybe the day to day, the diet. There's there's so many little things um, that add up to it. But I think consistency and maybe just the day to day maintaining uh, your standards and your the, the way you live. I think. But do you, do you think to get to that the, the the top level, you know, if you're obviously got the talent. The top level is about looking after looking after yourself, training training to the level that you should be playing in a match. Do you think that's why certain players that you played with have not quite got to their potential because they've not put it in in training, or do you think the training it doesn't it doesn't affect people getting into that level? Because I know you, you've, lost, yeah. you've mentioned Ryan Bennett, which I would yeah. imagine would be somebody who would train as hard as he played. And then obviously we've mentioned Marcus Madison, who, you know, classed as the worst trainer and hasn't really fulfilled the potential that he that everybody's seen him doing, you know, at Peterborough. He's, you know, his stats, you know, were the best, the best in the league before he left. Um, so do you think that is a massive thing? I think it's a lot of it is mentality as well, you know, when you when you um you, you know where you want to go and you work towards it. You know, some, some, a lot of people, like they say, talent talent is a big part of it, but a lot of it is the hard work, you know. And someone like Ryan Bennett, for example, he's constantly asking questions. He wants to he wants to be the best he can be. You know, um, when he came, I personally, like, we, we was totally opposites, you know. So it, it worked because he didn't kind of have that aggressive side to his game, sort of that rough side and... And he built it. Eventually, he became a little bit more nasty as how he was supposed to be by the time he'd left. So he wanted to learn and he, you could see that he was taking everything on board and learning, you know. Um, and I think sometimes when you're really talented and everyone uh, has got their arm around you and making sure you're playing because you're the best player or the most talented player, it can get to your head, you know. Um, but players like Ryan Bennett, it didn't actually affect him. He just he knew where he wanted to go and he, he went about it the right way. He just wanted to improve every time. Oh, excellent. Um, next question is, biggest match you, you played in as a player? Uh, I've played in quite a few massive, massive ones. I mean, for Posh, I probably would be the playoff final, I think, just because it was a one-off game, you know. Um, so it, it was, if we win, we're up, or if not, we stay in the league. So for me, that one was massive, just the, the whole build-up to it as well. I think that that was the biggest game, you know, um, as in when it came to Posh in, in, 
in my time there, in, in my career, to be honest, it could have been probably because it was the only playoff final one I ever played in. Um, but in terms of biggest match, I'll say probably the African Nations semi final. Um, played against Ivory Coast, so they had the likes of Yaya Toure, Javinho, Aurier, you know, there's, there's some big names uh, playing that game, and I think um, that was probably, yeah, my biggest ever game, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, that must have been an amazing experience playing against that, that level of, of, of team. Uh, brilliant. Um, best manager that you've, you've worked under? I've been quite lucky. I've had very, very good managers. So, so I thought about this the other day, but I think the one that I clicked with the most and which helped my development the most was probably Tony Pudis. Um, when I went to Stoke, I mean, like he he loved everything about me, you know, he let me carry on just doing exactly what I do. And I was perfect for him, you know, at the time. Uh, spent two years there, got a promotion to the Premier League with them. So it was, it was massive. Um, and he was a big role model in that. Uh, in terms of when I was adapting, then probably Darren is up there as well. Probably best man managers in training sessions are always good, lively. Mm. And um, even though I wasn't as comfortable as, you know, playing in his system all the time, but he made it, he made me seem integral um, to what he was trying to do. And then another one which surprised me was Richie Welland at Swindon um, when I was there last season. He, he, um, he was very good. He reminded me of Darren a lot. They were they're very similar in the way they that their approach to the game expansive and just uh, trusting players on the ball. So them three do stand out. No, no, and it's a, a good selection. Obviously, Tony Pudis has done pretty much everything. You know, mm. Ferguson's won lots of won lots of uh, promotions. So it's a good mix, and I guess you can take the the best of those into your into your sort of management style as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I've, exactly. I've taken little bits here and there. I'm in touch with all of them. Um, and, and to be fair, I've been like, I've just been learning. I mean, I've, I've took every opportunity I can to go watch training sessions. Um, I've, I'm, I think I'm going into Tottenham in the next couple of weeks to watch. So if I'm watching, you know, Mourinho take a session, you know, it, it just helps as, as much as possible. So I'm just trying to tap into everyone I've sort of met, all the contacts and just use it as, as much as I can. And then, yeah, hopefully I just learn any little thing I can learn off them will play a big part, especially at the level where I'm at, you know. <laughs> no, 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 definitely. Brilliant. So last last question um before we wrap it up is one from a, obviously a, a posh sort of um not a legend but a, a player that has, has gone on to do better things um is Ivan Tony. If if Ivan Tony, if you're a sort of the manager of Brentford, if Ivan Tony um and Brentford don't get promoted this season, would you would you Say to him, stay, stay another season to help them get back up, or or try and get into get into the the Premier League with a. There's lots of rumours that there's lots of Premier League teams, you know, sort of looking at his stats and um, mm. you know, for next season. I think just from knowing him, I think he he wants to get as high as he can. Um, so and and it's an opportunity as well, you know. You, there's nothing to say that he'll have the same sort of season next season. So he, he's got a strike while the iron's hot, you know. Um, so for me, I would say he needs to go and do the best he can. Um, but as a manager, you want your best players. So again, it would be a big loss for them. But for me, Ivan Tony needs to go um, at the end of the season. Hopefully, he goes up with Brentford. But I think mm -hmm. either way. He's got to actually progress because he's been he's been doing it uh, consistently now. He done it in League One last year. A lot of people questioned him, and now he's he's proved he could do it in the Championship comfortably, scoring goals week in week out. Mm. And then the next, the, the only next level is the Premier League. You know, he's got he's, mm. he's good enough. You can see he's kind of got everything to his game. He's adapted. He's improved so much in the last few seasons. And he's got to test himself at the highest place he can because um, it, he may only get this opportunity to do it. So who do, you, who do you think would be the perfect fit for him if, it, if every club was, you know, going in for him? Who do you think would, would be the perfect fit? I think he one? could... I, I think he's one of them players that can kind of do it for a lot of... them um, Because he's got so many attributes. He is strong. He's a strong boy. He's mobile. Um, he, you know, so he, I don't think he's, there's any limit to him. But I, I would say a mid-table Prem team, he, he comfortably settled in. Like, I could see him like I an Everton or someone like that, you know, some, some that, that sort of team, but a, a team pushing, but not quite there. And because I don't see, like, I, no disrespect to them, but I mean, they've got uh, Calvin Lewin. 
Um, but I don't see him too far off, if I'm honest. You know, um, you know, he's got that sort of stature still. It's good in the air. And for me, I think a team like that, where he can push on and eventually be one of the big boys, I think he's one of them. It's his next sort of team. No, no, definitely. No, I think, yeah. For me, for me personally, I, I can see him at, say, like a, a West Ham, where yeah. you know, they haven't really got an out-and-out -out striker. They've got Antonio. Yeah. Who, mm. but, you know, having Ivan Tony sort of central and then Antonio mm. could go wide or play off him. I think that would mm. be a, per a perfect fit, whether that whether that mm -hmm. could be off, you never know. Mm -hmm. But and he's obviously based in London still. So um yeah. but Gabby, I really appreciate really appreciate you coming on on and uh, they're all the questions, so you, you can take a breath now. Um <laughs> but, uh, well um this will be put onto our YouTube channel um, yeah. later this week. Um, so we'll put it onto our, our Facebook and Twitter to let everybody know so then people can, can see it. But um, yeah, all the best for all the all the different things that you're working on. I know you're obviously working in the media media side for mm -hmm. till the end of the season, um, which hopefully will be a good a good end to the season. Um, and you know, obviously when you get started back with uh, Spalding, all the best for the coming season. So um I'd like to thank everybody uh, from InsureWise of obviously supporting us through through these the different sports chats and guys we'll look forward to seeing you again. Thank you.